Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today I have a very special guest, the one, the only, Brett Clark. And we're going to be sharing his story. Uh, it's a remarkable story uh, coming from being brand spanking new in the industry, wet behind the ears. You can't get any wetter than brand spanking new with zero finance, finance experience, zero mortgage experience, going from scratch from a standing start to $3 million in volume and beyond per month in just three months. So obviously pretty dang outstanding. And he's just going to share his journey. And I'm going to be here as your tour guide, if you will, and just uh, have him open up to share the plight, the challenges that he had before locking in on some of our wicked effective marketing systems, tools, and the formula that, of course, eludes most people in this business and the formula that uh, most people unfortunately never find and keeps them stuck in the rut doing it the hard way. Well, fortunately for uh, you know the delight of myself in serving Brett and obviously for him and his family, he locked in on that formula. And as you've just heard, the results were nothing short of remarkable and continue to just keep mounting. And uh, he's been going stratospheric ever since. So Brett, super stoked to be here with you and just delighted and excited to have you share your journey. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's It's been a fun journey so far. Yeah, and it's been like, man, launching out of the rocket and going stratospheric in a hurry. And uh, perhaps, you know, we'd be remiss not to share the before and after because a lot of people listening to this, watching this, they're like, man, I've been in this business for 10 years or 15 years and I'm still not consistently doing $3 million a month. Uh, what is the secret? What the heck is he doing that's different? And so a lot of people listening, watching this, they're in a place where they might be doing good, but they're ready to step up to great. Or maybe they're kind of just in uh, I can't afford it prison, struggling, spinning their wheels, banging their head against the wall and wondering, how do I get out of this struggle? And so your, uh, your journey is going to inspire many, I'm sure. Why don't we start off by just having you share uh, what got you into the industry? Uh, where are you located how long have you been in the industry? What inspired you to get in? Maybe just share a little bit of your origin story and then we'll launch into uh, what happened since you got started. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you again for having me. I'm I'm so pumped to uh, be able to be where I am. For, uh, for all of you out there, I am a Army, U.S. Army Special Operations guy. Um, did 10 years at the U.S. Army and I just wanted to kind of take that um, glass ceiling off. So... Mm. Um, I was looking at different ways. I finished my bachelor's degree, jumped into an MBA at UNC Chapel Hill, and I'm here in North Carolina, just an hour south of Chapel Hill. So it was a, a good fit for me. And in my last year of the military, I was like, you know what? Now what do I want to be when I grow up? You know, like right. you kind of continue to just do the same thing and you're going along and then you realize you have to grow up out of the military sometime. And so that's kind of the path that I was on. So I went in, went into my MBA and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go financial, uh, some financial route, maybe venture capital, management consulting, something like that, that kind of fits that foreign influence going out and working out of the embassies um, line of work. But it was going to take me into the big cities. I was going to have to go back up to D.C. or down to Georgia or something like that and live in a big city. But I kind of like my open spaces here in North Carolina. Right. And um, so we were kind of like looking around and I got connected with one of my wife's best friends. Um, and she was like, you know what? I know a branch manager. Just talked to her. It was about Thanksgiving of last year. And so Thanksgiving, I didn't even know that the mortgage industry was like, a thing. I knew that I bought a house before and I right. knew how a VA loan worked, sort of. And I knew that I bought a house with a mortgage. That was about as much as I knew from that point. Um, and she was like, hey, do you want to like own your own brand? Like you make as much money as you want to work for. You work the hours that you kind of want to work. Do you want like your glass ceiling to go away? Um, and you kind of want to just like own your own business. And I was like, well, you caught me at the glass ceiling going away. Ambitious guy, right. just want to like kind of achieve and continue to grow. And so that's kind of what opened my mind. So I started to research and I was like, would this be good? Would I enjoy it? And they were like, hey, you get to talk to as many people as you want. You get to help people out, make a bunch of friends and make money doing it. And I was like, you got me. So 
I got licensed in December, um, got hired in January. And so we are in what, May, June now. So yeah. you can see I've only been in the industry the and knew the industry existed for like six months now. Yeah, it's incredible how far you've come in such a short period of time. But I mean, for someone who's uh, watching this, who has very little experience, you're trying to get your legs underneath you, you'll certainly be able to relate to uh, Brett's journey because, you know, it doesn't get any more brand new than, you know, literally starting in January. And when you reached out to uh, to us here at Mortgage Marketing Coach, I think you, you'd been in the business for about a month and a half. Is that right, Brett? Right. Yeah. It was yeah. like end of February going into March. Right. So you had an opportunity to kind of cut your teeth a little bit on the front lines and uh, being on the front lines is no uh, surprise to you or no, uh, no, nothing new to you being a special ops guy, but obviously a very different environment. Now the bullets are uh, realtors not giving you the time of day, you know, the bullets flying by your head, you know, enemy fire is like apathy, right? They don't really care. You know, who is this, you know, guy, Brett Clark, never heard of him. You know, oh, you're new, no thanks, you know. So you've got a different battle at your hands, but obviously, uh, you know, not for the faint of heart in both scenarios. This one obviously uh, is not a battle necessarily with uh, guns, but it's so, certainly a battle that takes uh, some brass balls and some statistical fortitude when you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net. So tell us about that. I mean, it was a month and a half of you doing it the hard way. Uh, tell us a little bit about your journey in terms of the daily struggle, uh, and the the new bullets that were flying by your head this time now on the front lines of capitalism. Tell us about uh, the struggle before you met us. Yeah, so I mean, you kind of hit it too. And it was, nobody knew who I was. So it's like, why would I trust you with my clients? Like right. you're new, you, you don't know the industry. How could you possibly know what these loans are or even consult my clients for the best product? And so that was like a big struggle. And I was going from office to office and I mean, I still had the same ambition, the same work, uh, you know, the drive, but it's like, it doesn't matter if you're in somebody's office and you don't really know what you're talking about. They know you're new. Um, and so that was like the beginning. I had gone in, hey, can I meet with you? Didn't know what to say on the phone. I didn't know what to say when I was in the office. And then I didn't really have the confidence in myself either. I was like, well, I mean, they're right. I don't know anything. Right. Um, so yeah, before that, for that first month and a half, it was kind of like, who do I call and how do I even approach the situation? So yeah, that was definitely a new experience for me. Yeah, and you were able to wet your teeth a little bit or uh, you know, wet your palate and cut your teeth a little bit with uh, having some friends and family who, you know, fortunately were still in the tail end of the refi boom. So you're able to help a few friends and family. As far as I recollect, you were able to help about four of your friend and family members uh, get a loan just by virtue of the crazy low rates. Is that right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, back in February, we were in the twos. So like you were kind of dumb not to refinance at the moment back in, right. back in February. So yeah, it was kind of the, Hey, I saw you're in this. Can you get me a two? And I was like, let me look. <laughs> right. And so, you know, by divine grace and providence, you had a few uh, gimmies by virtue of that rising tide floating all the boats with that, you know, crazy low rate refi boom. So we'll take it, you know, we'll take mm -hmm. whatever mana falls our way. Right. But, exactly. uh, you know, then of course you started hitting the point of diminishing returns with that. And that was, you know, at the same time that you're banging your head against the wall, cold calling and trying to get in front of these realtors, they're not giving you the time of day. So there's a, a little bit of a perfect storm starting to form where you're seeing the writing on the wall, realizing that, you know, the squeeze that was producing uh, some juice before is uh, no longer producing much juice and uh, you're hitting the point of diminishing returns such that you should probably find something else that works. Tell us a little bit about your unique situation because not everyone comes from special ops in the army. That's kind of a unique background, obviously very intense, high stress, uh, very high stakes, you know, your, your, your life on the line, your, your uh, teammates life on the line. And so, you know, you're you're trained to deal with a lot of pressure, a lot of stress and to be able to still, you know, have a relatively uh, slow heartbeat so you can, you know, keep your feet on the ground and make quick decisions and sound decisions. And and also to be able to train yourself to prepare for, you know, really crazy situations that most people would never even think of entering into voluntarily. Tell us about that identity of a special ops uh, operator and how that 
identity clashed with starting afresh in a brand new industry, brand new business uh, without any confidence or competence or, you know, understanding of the business itself from a operating standpoint. Tell us about the unique situation experience that was for you as a special ops operator coming into a new industry, taking on a new challenge. I'm curious. Well, and so like, that's a good point. And they kind of talked about it in my, um, my MBA program, but it's like everything I had learned is towards this different, completely different, uh, world. So like the political world, I understand policy. I understand what's going around in different countries, but the business world is totally different. So how you approach business, how you approach people, how you go about everything, totally different. And so you walk out into the world and you're like, oh man, I'm confident, you know, I've led several people, you know, I've gone through these things and you realize that none of that really matters. Right. Um, that you don't know it anymore. There's no boot camp, right? For mortgage <laughs> professionals. There is get out there and do it, and that's your boot camp. Right. And so I came into a company where it really was um learn as you go. We're not going to feed you leads. So you build the leads as you go, but it really helps you take control of your brand. Um, and so the negative side of that is I don't have a senior person on top of me saying, Hey, go to this realtor, ask these questions and you get these things done. They just said, Hey, these are the things that I did 20 years ago. Hey, go try it out. And right. I'm like, okay. Uh, how? <laughs> and they're like, you know, with your own brand, you know, try to like present yourself with what you have. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> have anything. So and those are some know. of the big things of like, I had this confidence and then none of it mattered. So it's like, I had these two combating forces that were like, I am confident, but I'm not. But I actually found out that like through your program and that mindset change, that um, you can really add all of that value I had inside the military side and use that confidence. So um, before I had it, you know, before I had the answers kind of given to me <laughs> from your program, um, I was just like, I don't have confidence. But once I realized that it all related, that's where I started to make my strides. Yeah, it's interesting because you had that superpower in your back pocket, but you didn't know how to unlock it in this new application, this new space, this new environment and circumstance. And I think a lot of people grapple with that. You know, they come from being a scientist in a lab or they come from being, you know, a financial planner or they come from being a realtor or they come from being a teacher or they come from, you know, being in the financial department at an auto dealership. So many different backgrounds. Right. And so often, you know, we can hit a very high level of competency and skill and mastery in one domain, but then we feel completely naked and castrated in this new domain. And it's like, how do I leverage what used to give me so much strength of certainty and competence and confidence? And now I feel naked, you know, wandering in the wilderness, naked, unarmed, you know, it's not a good combination. So it's interesting that the default setting isn't that, you know, we have that superpower at our, our, at our disposal for any new venture we want to take on unless we know how to connect the dots on that. So uh, we're going to get into in a moment how you connected the dots on that in our program or how our program helped you to connect the dots to unleash that superpower that you gained and built up through, you know, rigor and hard work and toil and pursuit of mastery as a special, you know, special ops operator in the army to, you know, how you're able to unleash that in the marketplace in your, in your brand spanking new mortgage business. But we'll just pause that for a moment. We'll come back to it. Why don't we just uh, get into some of the things you tried? I mean, you heard from your sales manager, here's the stuff that worked for me 20 years ago, you know, give them a slap on the back, go get them tiger. What are sort of some of the things that you did? Obviously there wasn't much time lapse, right? A month and a half, but you're a badass. You're into massive action. That's certainly one of your superpowers is massive action. So you did a bunch of stuff in a month and a half. Tell us about some of the different things you tried that, you know, your sales manager and other people were telling you, this is the way to do it. And uh, give us a little bit of a, a glimpse as to uh, the different forms and fashions by which you banged your head against the wall, doing it the hard way before you came to plan to prosper at Mortgage Marketing Coach. So, I mean, I guess you can say the things I was doing aren't necessarily different than the things I'm doing now. 
It was right. just the person that showed up at the door was totally different. So I was doing cold calls, making the calls. I was going to offices and, and talking to the realtors. And, you know, for all the mortgage professionals that are out there, like, thank you for only focusing on refinances and rejecting all of your realtors because you really helped my business out. Like, no offense to you guys, but you didn't care about your relationships and I jumped in. So, um, easy, easy to poach. They were very easy to poach. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, at the very, very beginning, I was doing all the same things that everybody was doing, that everybody was doing. I was dabbling in Facebook, dabbling in uh, Instagram, looking at Google and how I can get out there, um, cold calling, seeing people. And those were all the things that were kind of like what everybody else was doing. But my biggest problem, and, you know, we'll get into it, is just, I didn't show up as the right person. I showed up as the new kid that I'm sure anybody that switched schools or showed up on the first day of a college, like you're the new dude that kind of hangs out in the back until you make some friends and then you build some confidence. And right. nobody really wants to work with that dude. No, no, that dude is not an asset. That dude is deemed as a liability, not because they don't have huge assets to bring, but because they see themselves as a liability, but I'm new. Who's ever going to want to work with me? I'm inexperienced. I don't know all the loan programs. What happens if the realtor asks a question and I don't know the answer? You know, it's those oh shit moments, you know, where it's like, you know, what am I going to do? And it's because we see all those as liabilities that other people see them as liabilities. You know, the world without is just a mirror of the, our world within. So that's kind of what you're speaking to is that, you know, that sense, that sheep, sheepishness, if I can call it that. And with my uh, my Dornal Dana slur added to it, the sheepishness of feeling inadequate, not enough, the lack limitation, scarcity of self perception, and obviously there was a lot that started to compound into that vortex of feeling like the new guy, feeling like you don't have enough to offer, feeling like you're the liability, not the asset. Tell us about some of the. Uh, shall we say dark nights of the soul, deepest fears you started to, uh, you know, mull in your mind uh, when you're making these calls, people aren't giving you the time of day, you're used to slaying the dragons, you're used to having a steady paycheck, now you're on 100% commission with no safety net, you eat what you kill, you got a family to feed, you got a wife to provide for, kids to provide for. Tell us about some of those, you know, dark nights of the soul fears that started to crop up for you and being the new guy standing back in the corner, uh, you know, feeling like you don't have a whole lot to offer yet. What was that like? And what were some of your biggest fears? Yeah. And I think any professional inside uh, a full commission uh, line of work can really um, understand the same sentiment that I went through. And it's so just for everybody out there, I've got two little girls, a two year old and a four year old, and I'm married and live here. And so when you're in the military, it doesn't matter if the market tanks, it doesn't matter if there's a pandemic, it doesn't matter like anything, you're getting paid. So like even during sequestrations, when everybody was kind of like getting laid off or didn't know exactly what was going on, um, I was still getting paid. So it was like this 100% secure and I'm on a contract that they can't break unless I do something just absolutely stupid. So it's like, right. hey, for the next six years, you're getting paid every month, you know, twice a month, no worries. And then you realize like, hey, I'm getting out because I feel like I have bigger, better things to go do. I have more people that I can actually help um, get into their, their next dream. And you're like, but if nobody trusts me with a job, I'm not putting bread on the table. Right. Um, and for somebody that's providing, and I am the sole provider for my family, um, it's kind of a heavy weight on your shoulders. It's a pretty big mantle that you're, that you're carrying. So um, those were some of the, the big things that I worried about that my wife worried about, like, hey, if I don't get out there and some days or some weeks, you got, you know, 50 hour weeks, 60 hour weeks, because it's not an option to not eat. Um, and so if you are the sole provider out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know that, oh crap, if I don't get this deal done, or if I don't get this realtor partner, who's putting, you know, who's paying your car payment? Who's paying your mortgage? Who's putting food on the table? Right. 
Yeah, and that's uh, you know someone who's listening, watching this, uh, if indeed they've ever been in a position of being the sole provider, they know what you're talking about. And those of you who uh, aren't, you can still make the translation because there's still a contribution of bread, being a breadwinner and you know pulling your weight in the household that you know is really a big part, especially for us men, a big part of our identity. And for women, it can be a little different. For women, it's more like you know being able to contribute to the family, nurturing the family, uh, giving, uh, security and safety uh, to the, you know, the con contributed financial foundation of the household. And of course, adding some more sparkle, some more fun, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, women have certainly uh, motives, just very oftentimes different, but the pain is real regardless when you're not able to deliver on that. And so for you, you were quite preemptive and proactive to reach out for help. You know, uh, that, that, I'm sure was a big part of your identity as a uh, special forces operator in, in the army is, you know, you don't wait till you're in desperation mode. You know, the more you perspire in training and preparation, the more you prevent bleeding on the front lines in battle. And that's uh, something that I've, you know, really taken to heart as I've read amazing, you know, stories of valor and bravery uh, from our special forces operators and Navy SEALs and so on. Uh, it's amazing how a lot of those principles translate very well in life in general and certainly on the front lines in business. So tell us about that because, I mean, most people, they would literally spend, I don't know, at least three months, six months, nine months, 12 months trying to reinvent the wheel, trying to figure things out, try to, you know, maybe, you know, peel back the cranium of their, employer or their sales manager and ask them for more advice and maybe listen to some free podcasts or read some free blogs or watch some YouTube videos or see if they can kind of just make shift some kind of a plan together. And that wasn't your story. You were exceedingly quick to nip this in the bud. You saw the writing on the wall. Tell us about your psychology around that because it's relatively rare, believe it or not, especially to make a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in yourself in the way that you did so early in your career. So tell us about your uh, your mindset around that. And why did, you, why did you decide to pull out the big guns right from the get-go versus, you know, try it out, see if you can figure it out in your own, on your own first before pulling out the big guns? So I guess one of the things that I have going for me that really helps out in this situation is that I'm surrounded by entrepreneurs. And mm -hmm. I guess you could say you become who you surround yourself with is, is mm -hmm. part of that mindset. So I have people that are thinking big. And so I think big um, mm -hmm. because that's what we talk about, that we're talking about dreams, aspirations. And so there's actually a great study out there. It's done by the Harvard Business Review. And they talk about big, hairy, ambitious goals. Yes, the BHAG. Yeah. Um, and that was my mindset. So we looked at inside even the military community, how do we create that big, hairy, ambitious goal to get after the national objective? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to apply this to my myself. Day one, I was like, cool. What's my big, hairy, ambitious goal? And that was, I want my own branch. Like, so you can imagine, I'm sure there's people out there that are like, day one, this dude's trying to get a, his own branch. But yeah, that was my big, hairy, ambitious goal of, I want my own branch and I want it in Raleigh. And it's, for me, it was if I have my own branch, I know that I can better serve other people. And so I'm in the military. I'm service oriented. Mm -hmm. I got into this industry because everybody's got the next chapter they want. And there's a lot of people out there that don't necessarily want to help them turn the page. And I want to help them turn the page. So it was like, hey, cool. Here's my big, hairy, ambitious goal. How do I get there? And... I spent a month turning my wheels. I had my my goal up on my board and I had some smaller goals, like the one year, two year goals. And I was like, now nah, how do I get here? And it wasn't working at the very beginning. And I was like, well, if I'm going to get to my, my goal, then I have to push myself and I have to find something that does work because I'm not going to go out and recreate a car. Like I don't need to go and find a way to build the Model T. Poor Shardy has a car, you know, um, I already want it. I can't afford right. it, but I want it. Um, but it's already there, so I don't have to build it. So if people are out there and if you look at the statistics for the top one mortgage lenders out there, they're making money. 
they're out there. They're doing great. Um, they're living great lives. And it's like, well, I want to get there. And they've already done all the work. 25 years of experience of what does and doesn't work. So let's get on, find somebody that knows what it is and wants to share it. And so um, I heard great things from you. Uh, I saw great reviews from this program and hell, my review is going to be a great review of this program because it's all mindset. So as you get into it, Doran's going to give you a lot of great items that you can use to get those realtors, but pay attention to the mindset piece because if you don't get the mindset, none of the tools matter. It doesn't matter if you have a billion tools, if you don't want to use them, it doesn't matter if you have 900 hammers, if you don't want to swing one. So get the mindset behind you and actually pay attention to that part because it's far more important than the rest of it. And I apologize if I'm, you know, down talking some of the other tools you guys have. They're all great. They're great tools. Use them, but use them correctly. Yeah, you make a really great point. And it's certainly worth reemphasizing because I often say it doesn't matter how many tools you have in the toolbox. If you have a leaky toolbox, we got a problem, right? So it really is making, you know, the mindset is a huge piece of the puzzle. But obviously, you know, on the outside looking in, most people think their mindset's on point. What are you talking about? I got a kick-ass mindset. I got a winner's mindset. I don't need that mindset crap. My mindset is dialed in, right? Those are the people that usually need the most help with their mindset. But, you know, we don't sell mindset because mindset doesn't sell. We sell marketing systems, uh, automation. Uh, we sell, you know, words that work to book appointments like a hot knife through butter with top producing agents without the hell of cold calling because that's sexy. Mindset, that ain't sexy. But truth be told, we, we, we uh, you know, really bring people in based on the stuff that they're really fired up about, the, mar the marketing, the automation, the systems. And then we give them what they need, which is hemming up the holes in their toolbox that is causing them to leak tools on a daily basis and not leverage you know, what they actually have in their hands so that you can actually start swinging those hammers you already have access to. But you make some really great points, you know, surrounding yourself uh, with winners is a key part of becoming a winner. You know, we are the sum average of the top five people we hang out with. And that's either an advantage or disadvantage, depending on what kind of people you're surrounding yourself with. So you're strategically positioned to prosper, hanging around winners and hanging around big thinkers that have big, hairy, audacious goals. And then of course, coming from special ops, you had built-in masters in their respective domains, right? Whether it be, you know, masters uh, at uh, operating the specific artillery, masters of strategy, masters of execution on various different aspect, aspects of being a, uh, you know, well-rounded operator. And so you were used to leveraging other people's mastery, other people's, uh, you know, high level skill that was honed over years and years of blood, sweat and tears. Right. So that that came, I think, built in, baked into your mindset. So this was nothing new for you. For a lot of people, you know, investing in themselves is kind of a foreign concept. It's like, why would I want to do that? I already went to university. That was useless. Why would I want to do that again? Right. And so it's a very different application of the principle uh, that I think uh, Benny Franklin uh, said so well when he said, for the best return on your money, pour your purse into your head. Because when you expand your own mastery, your own skill, your own prowess, you expand your potential. When you expand your potential, you expand your productivity and the value you can bring to the marketplace. And that's certainly been the case for you. Tell us about uh, the secret motivation behind this. Because, you know, obviously you're, a, you're, you're the sole dragon slayer for your family. Uh, there's a lot vying on making this work. You have an identity of a winner. You're not about to sign up for failure. That's just not an option, period. But deep down inside, there's always that sense of taking on a new challenge that can bring in certain doubts and fears that weren't there before. And then there's a lot at stake, too, in terms of who you are as provider, who you are as you know someone who has developed that winner's mindset. Obviously, you know, it's not something that you're, you're, you're sharing with your best buddies. You may not even be sharing it with your wife because you don't want to freak her out. But in, your, in, your, in the, the darkest chasm, secret chasm of your soul, it's you and God. And you're really, there's something there that for you is that like white hot fire of burning desire. That's the most potent reason why losing is not an option. Winning is the only option, period, end of story. What was it for you? Um, helping people. It's literally 
my only thing. So I told my wife, I was like, I don't want to make more money so that I can buy fancy things. That's great. If you have a lot of money, you can buy fancy things. I want to make more money for experience. And I want to share those experiences with others. And so when I was on the call with you, Doran, um, we talked about how I want to build a center to help people get to where they want to be. And so that is the deep, dark secret of why Brett wakes up in the morning mm. is because there are so many people out there that want to turn the page to chapter two or chapter 10 or chapter 20, wherever you are, and they just don't have the right people in front of them to give them the answers. And that's where mm. I want to be. So um, there are so many people out there. I like to throw banks under the bus because banks are banks and everybody likes to throw banks under the bus. Um, <laughs> but like not always there for the people. And it's one of those things where like, I want to be there for each individual client so that I can build enough capital to help people get to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter in my opinion, where you grew up, what color your skin is, what gender you identify as, whatever it may be, there is a program for you to get where you need to be. And somebody just needs to help show you that you're valuable that regardless of what you do, you're valuable. If you want to paint pictures for a living, you have value. If you mm -hmm. want to race a car for a living, you have value. If you want to sell houses for a living, you have value. If you want to be a guy on Wall Street, you have value. And sometimes you just don't know which path to walk on and or where the door is to the path. And so I want to create a center that just takes people from point A and shows them where point B is. Like, hey, here's some scholarships. This is how you write the paper. Hey, you're already extremely intelligent. This is how you build a resume. How do you get through the door? Um, and so I really just want to be able to show my kids, hey, we have this money and this is how we give it back. Hey, we have this money. So this is how we can take your friends on vacations with us so that they can experience the same things you can. Um, I want the world to stop limiting themselves. And so my deep down dark desire is that everybody can achieve and get rid of their roadblocks. And so I'm doing what I'm doing so that everybody else can get where they need to be. And sometimes getting the house is their roadblock because they just don't feel like they have enough value to own their own home. Mm. And so like, let's find out a program, especially in the United States. I, I can't speak for Canada, especially in the United States. There's probably a program for you. So yeah. save a little bit of money work on a little bit of credit and between FHA and conventional and Freddie Mac and private investors and USDA, like we got a program for you. Right. It exists. We can get that roadblock. Just, you just got to reach out to the right people. Yeah. When you're committed, there's always a way, but man, I just got goosebumps as you're sharing uh, what you call that, you know, deep, dark secret, which is really just a radiant bright light of, you know, the, uh, the spirit of God working in you and through you, you know, because, at the end of the day, that desire to serve, to make a difference in people's lives, to be light in the darkness, that is a divine calling and a divine gift and a divine mantle of leadership that, you know, everyone who is willing to have the audacity and the courage to receive that mantle of purpose, to get out of self-preservation mode, to get out of accumulation mode and to get into service mode and to be light in the darkness for someone else, man, that is life on fire. That is a life worth living. That's a life on purpose and with purpose. So I just, you know, honor that in you. It's really uh, beautiful to see someone really living it because you can't give that life to someone else unless you're living it yourself. And, uh, you know, so you're obviously, you know, this is nothing new for you. You had this when you're in special ops, you know, in the army, uh, but now you have uh, a new platform and a new vehicle to, shine that light even even further and to be able to make an even greater impact. So I love that, you know, you're really being true to that divine call. And uh, I know there's going to be an avalanche of awesome. So many, so many uh, people touched and served and liberated as you remain faithful and true to that purpose. So I love that motivation, brother. That is so awesome. Yeah, thanks. I, I always say there's no such thing as a bad client, just one that's not ready yet. 
Yeah. And, and the cool thing is, is we're not, we're not here to force feed people to their dreams or force feed people to their breakthrough. They have to be ready. They have to get to what I call the fed up threshold where they're sick and tired of being sick and tired of getting their butts kicked or being in the muck and mire of, you know, being in a blockade or a prison and they're ready to break free and to seize liberty. And that's, you know, the beautiful thing about being of service is we get to liberate people out of their plight, out of their pain and into new life, new hope, a new future, a new solution, a new breakthrough. And so we share that, uh, you know, that common passion. So we're definitely brothers from another mother. There's no doubt about that. I, that's why we're both bald. That's right. Bald and beautiful bald, and brothers from another mother with a heart to serve and to liberate people. So I love that. And so tell us about, okay, so you got with us a month and a half and in, you're like, okay, I need to get, you know, armed and dangerous. I can't be showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife. That's not going to bode well. So you, you schedule a breakthrough call, like everyone else that I interview here, that's the first step. You know, you, you either saw a Facebook ad or hopped online or whatever. You watched a webinar, you booked a, a breakthrough call. And then we get on the phone and we have some real talk about what's at stake if you continue to show up to the gunfight, the gunfight with a butter knife and what's at stake if you keep doing it the hard way and what are you really committed to and what kind of life do you want to create? So, you know, we really, uh, we got into it. And then there was that moment of decision where it's like, oh, wow, okay. It's, this is, uh, this is either uh, buckle like cheap lawn furniture, shrink back into my comfort zone and play it safe and play small in indecision and procrastination and deliberation or screw it, let's freaking do it and let's go for this thing. And obviously we know the story. You said, screw it, let's do it. But tell us about some of the, cause let's be real. Even when it's like, you know, you're, you're, it's already a no brainer for you. And you're like, man, you already had the credit card out halfway through the call. You're already like, let's go time. Like we don't need to be belaboring this. There's still a sense of like being freaked out and excited at the same time. Cause it's like, you know, it's getting real when you're putting skin in the game and we're not talking 50 bucks, right? That right. ain't going to change your life. So tell us about some of the the real fears or doubts you had to abate or deal with or face when you took that plunge and said, screw it, let's do it. Well, I mean, so the first thing that a lot of people are going to go through too, just with any program is like, Hey, is this program going to be worth the squeeze for one? I'll tell you it is. And it's because it's going to change how you view yourself mm -hmm. and how you view what you're going to do. And it kind of just helps you get comfortable in your own skin. Um, but for me, it was like, hey, here's my opportunity cost. I can spend what I need to to get into this program or I can continue to try to invent my own will. And six months down the road, I can still be where a lot of rookies are. Um, and I was like, I don't have that kind of time. Um, I have a certain quality of life that I need to get to just to maintain life. So here's maintaining your quality of life. For me to be able to help somebody, I need to be above it. So everything that's above my quality of life that I've just, the military has kind of given me, um, anything above that, then I can share. So I need to get at it and I need to get going. Um, and I, I didn't want to waste any more time. Um, and so in our conversation, we talked about how let's just go after it and see what works and see what doesn't work and things are changing. Um, it probably helps that I'm at you, like UNC Chapel Hill, where they're kind of that innovation. They're looking at innovation. So they're they're looking at that side of moving into the next chapter. But um, things are different and we're going against different competitors. And I put money that nobody listening to this is with Rocket Mortgage or Quicken Loans um, because probably you guys not. probably already think that you're hot shit and you're and not. And they're getting um, fed leads all their desk monkeys getting fed leads all day every day on the guinea pig wheel. Right. So like there's no reason for them to be on this. Exactly. <laughs> um, but that's who we're competing with. And they've got money to advertise that you and I don't have. And that's where it comes down to why are you doing this? And I'm doing it and I'm spending, you gotta spend money to help people get where they need to be, because you have to be where you need to be to help others. You can't feed somebody with an empty bucket. Right. So I needed to fill my bucket so then I could feed somebody from it. Um, and so throughout that conversation, that was some of the fears. Like, how long do I want to sit with a bucket with a hole in it? Um, I could keep putting stuff in. I had put 
hundreds of dollars in the Facebook ads by myself and got nothing. Um, mm -hmm. So I was already, I guess you could say, wasting money. Um, right. And so I had already tried a lot of these things. It was just understanding the right way to go about it and the back end of things. And you just got to, you know, you got to fill it up. You got to patch your hole somehow. And if you think that you can do it all by yourself, then you haven't been around the world very long um, because God answers prayers with other people. Um, unless you're one of those lucky Moseses. And if you are, <laughs> please reach out. I'd love to hear your story. Yeah. And, and even still, he had uh, plenty of, of people that were supporting the cause when he first took the call. And we still have to relate to people every single day. And if we're not willing to receive the providential support that we need to fulfill our dream through people, chances are it ain't going to come from any other source. So you're hundred percent correct on that. And, you know, it's interesting because your motive was you know, a, a beautiful, benevolent motive. And I think a lot of people really honor and, uh, you know, appreciate the virtue in that. And a lot of people are like, man, I'm just happy to just kind of get by, you know, I just want to pay the bills. I think uh, you really highlight a, a key point because the best way to help the poor is not be one of them. But if we're in survival mode, if we're in, I can't afford a prison, we're not going to be able to help many people. And we'll often do more uh, for, you know, the avoiding of pain than we will to gain pleasure. So there's a, a uniqueness to your story where it's like, you know, I want to, I, I want to make sure that I continue making the kind of money I was making the lifestyle I had when I was in the army, but I have this white hot fire burning desire mission purpose to fulfill where I can be that beacon of light, where I can be that bubbling brook of, of benevolence and inspiration and the life tra transformation for other people that weren't as fortunate as I was or that, you know, can connect with the plight I went through. I dragged myself through hell by God's grace. And now I want to be the light in the darkness out of compassion and out of humility to serve other people out of that hell I came through. So there's lots of different motive there, but it's a unique motive in that it's about serving others. I think people could get a lot of benefit from bringing that into their mission versus just money accumulation, fancy cars, big houses, you know, the boat, the, there's nothing wrong with that. That's all cool. You know, there's nothing wrong with the, you know, the Porsches and the second homes on the water. That's all amazing. Right. But if that's the only reason why you're doing this, chances are you're only going to push yourself just a little bit out of your comfort zone to get that, to be able to push yourself well beyond your comfort zone into your superpowers of you know what you're fully capable of there's got to be a mission beyond just accumulation and self-serving and self-aggrandizement and financial freedom and the fame and fortune that comes with you know being able to be a top producer in this industry we call it fame I don't know if it would be fame on the grandiose celebrity standpoint, but certainly, you know, the Scotsman's guides of the world, the uh, being on the stages with the rewards and recognition, just trying to seek that alone. I don't think is enough rocket fuel in the rocket to tap your full potential. There's got to be a mission that's benevolent that serves others. And obviously, you know, that's not something someone force fed you, Brett, you arrived at it out of your own seeking and your own, surrendering in your own, you know, being an instrument in your maker's hands, which, you know, I think is worth highlighting for those of you who have a faith, that is a superpower to surrender in your maker's hands and say, here I am, God, use me, you know, and that allows you to tap into infinite potential, to tap into divine, infinite source of supply. So that's really, really awesome. And so here we are now, you pulled the trigger, you said, screw it, let's do it. You, you got yourself launched on a planet prosper. Tell us about the initial stages. Here you are brand spanking new in the business. Now you're brand spanking new in this new program. And you know, you're know you learning, you, you, we were giving you a sip of the fire hose, first of all. And then on top of that, you just have a ton of learn, ton to learn on multiple fronts, sales, marketing, mindset, and learning all the loan programs at the same time. Tell us about perhaps one or two things that you were presented with, and you don't have to necessarily get into detail with it, but some of the things that I was getting you to do in the initial stages that perhaps you're like, really, you really think that's going to work? Is that really what I signed up for? 
tell us a little bit about that. Kind of like Daniel uh, with uh, Master Miyagi when he's like, what's with this wax on, wax off crap? Seriously? Tell us a little bit about that. So to be honest, the the first thing was with the, the CRM, right? So, hey, we have this program and you're going to blast out to like 200 realtors and somebody's going to reach back and they're going to want to sit down with you. And I was like, okay, so they're going to sit down with me and get like a free meal out of me or whatever like that, but they're never actually going to reach back out. Um, that was one of the first things that I was like, cool, I am going to be the spam that everybody hates. <laughs> how is that going to, I mean, I'm sure all of you guys at any point in time have thrown away all of the mortgage warranty junk that you get in the mail, because even if you have a warranty, you get like 17 others in the mail. Um, and I was like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, I don't want to be that email or that text message that they're just like, ah, oh, this guy again. Right. <laughs> so, but surprisingly enough, it worked. Like people were like, oh, look, somebody actually wants to meet with me face to face. And one of the things you talked about was like, hey, don't give them all the answers in a text message and don't give them all the answers on a phone. Meet them in person and see if they jive and you jive with them. And one of the first like jokes I always make when I'm trying to set up a, a lunch or something like that is like, hey, you might hate the fact that I'm bald. So we should probably hang out because you don't want to work with a bald dude. Right. And now you know I'm bald. <laughs> or you might hate the way my voice sounds. <laughs> right. You so you don't want to send me clients because you think I look funny, I'm bald, and my voice sounds dumb. Right. Um, and you're a newbie to boot. Obviously, you're not going to. Yeah, and I'm that, new. Right? So, um, and usually that breaks the ice pretty well. But, um, but yeah, that I think has been a huge leverage point for me of like, oh, people are actually willing to sit down and build a relationship because realtors care about the relationship. Um, a lot of lenders care about the relationship. Clients care about the relationship. They just don't always tell you or know how important it is to them until somebody reaches out and tries to just talk about them and their business and their life. So um, that was one of the first things that I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, but it did. Um, just how you set up your discovery meetings and stuff like that. I was like, I don't know, but they work because people, I mean, Dorn will tell you, don't just get in there and talk about business, get in there and talk about people and make a relationship. And that makes all the difference. Yeah. hundred percent. Imagine that it actually works, right? Imagine that. Yeah. And you know, it's true because, you know, we get spam and we just delete it, but obviously there's, a method to the madness and it's not like it's completely out of left field there are real value add propositions that we bring to the table that have them receptive and eager to meet with you if not anything else just open they may not be eager at the initial stage because it's kind of like walking into a grocery store or any kind of uh, you know store where you're looking at knickknacks or something or clothing, and the clerk says, "Can I help you with anything?" And what do you say? No, I'm just I'm just looking, right? <laughs> and so they have that knee jerk reaction where they they kind of do the brush off just because they're so used to getting these loan leeches sucking them dry of referrals with nothing else of real unique value, and they just are tired of getting their time wasted with these uh, loan leeches that are just you know trying to get something from them instead of give something. So obviously there's a, a very calculated time tested method behind the madness that had you have a, you know, surprising, surprising, pleasant result, uh, even in the face of your initial skepticism. And let's talk about kind of fast forward now. So you, you decided to empty your cup so we could fill it with your dream. You said, okay, Doran, this thing that might seem like a, sta a spam program, unsolicited spam program, but I'm going to empty my cup. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And then imagine that it starts to work. You get these realtors receptive to meeting with you. You book a bunch of appointments. You do the discovery meeting on covering their pain points and challenges. And then, uh, you know, you land some VIP partners. Tell us about uh, how many VIP partners and by VIP guys for the uninitiated VIP partners are top producing realtors doing 20 plus transactions a year that have the privilege, if indeed you offer them the opportunity to take advantage of it, to join your VIP partnership program. They get it to take advantage of some very unique and compelling value propositions 
that the average Joe Schmo realtor just would not have the privilege and opportunity to get access to. So uh, let's fast forward now a month and a half into the program, Brett. How many VIP top producing realtors did you bring on? And what kind of production level were they doing? And what level of commitment were you able to foster from them in terms of them making the, you their exclusive exclusive lender? And uh, how much business did that translate into? Let's get into that. So for the, the first part, I probably have seven or eight uh, VIP partners uh, that are like exclusive. They hand me out to everybody. Um, and then it opened up opportunities to just talk to others higher than them. So some of my um, realtor partners are, um, they kind of run builders. So I am the now the preferred lender for several subdivisions, uh, which was an interesting route that I decided to go with looking at builders with our inventory being as low as it is right now, um, going that route. So I got some custom builders, I got some track builders some spec builders and the realtors that go with them that introduce me to those uh, to those builders. Um, and then some of the other ones I got because they just saw how transparent and open I was throughout a process. So they ended up just being the buyer's agent for somebody that I got through Facebook, through Doran's method, like through Sabina's um, Facebook ads. I got two people from that and then I pulled realtors from that because they're like, oh, wow, this guy actually works and he actually runs um, what he says. And it's not just talk, but he actually produces and fills the pain, the pain points that realtors have with all of the um, opaque lenders that are out there with like hiding fees or not talking about appraisals or getting out there. So I got some of those. Each one of those probably does 10 to 20 a year. Um, but what it really landed me is it landed me access to a BIC um, up in Raleigh that did 710 million last year with a goal of 1 billion in, in loans this year. And oh, that yeah. conversation was just phenomenal. And the major thing he told me was I got on a call with you because I was just impressed that you were willing to reach out. He was like, nobody's willing to reach out to just me. Um, not even like brokers in charge of like mortgage banks. Like they weren't even reaching out to him. They were like, oh, he's already taken. He's too high up there. Like he's been in the business for too long. He's already got people. They would call people beneath him. But I was like, nah, I want this guy. I want his advice, his opinion. And I went after him with, hey, you've been in the industry for a long time. What do you like or not like about your lenders? And he was like, let's jump on a call. We ended up talking about Jesus for 45 minutes, which <laughs> benefited me because I am a Christian. Um, <laughs> but even outside of that, just like, getting to know who he was and what inspired him. We talked about his boys that play baseball um, and how they're going to be no pro NBA player or MLB players in the, in the end. But, um, but yeah, it just landed me the opportunity and the confidence with these other builders um, or these other realtors. So that I could even talk to him and he gave me free reign. He said, Hey, reach out to my realtors if you want. He's got 62. So he's like, reach out to my realtors. If they want to work with you, cool. I'm not going to stop any of them. So um, that was one of the things that I got through Doran's program was reach out to them, find the top guys. Like don't go for people that don't close any loans. It doesn't matter if you have a hundred VIPs that do zero loans a year or zero purchase a year, you're getting zero with all hundred of them. Um, so like maybe it can be like four or five that do a hundred and then that's going to push me forward. So that was kind of the way I addressed the entire concept. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the power of audacity, right? Just to go after the top dogs and to have the swagger factor and the mojo by virtue of actually having a kick-ass value proposition that you can actually deliver on that isn't just smoke. It's not just BS, it's the real deal. And to be able to lean on a time-tested formula as well as of course, hemming up the holes in our toolbox so that we're not leaking those tools and we have the mindset of a winner so that we got that confidence and that confidence that elicits trust as uh, coach Pete often says. And of course, you know, we have cross pollinated many, many coined phrases. I'm not sure if I came up with it or him, but it's one of his favorites. It's I am a merchant of certainty. And you certainly latched on to that principle in a hurry. And, you know, you've, 
self-deprecating humor and, uh, you know, just bringing that heart to serve and bringing that curiosity that comes from true caring. You know, you can't be half pregnant. You can't half care. You either care or you don't. You absolutely care to your core. That's one of your superpowers. People can pick up on that in a nanosecond. And they can also pick up when you on when you don't care and you just have a self-serving reason to be calling. So that's been huge for you. And tell us about the results in terms of volume and, uh, and you know, those sorts of metrics for people who are kind of results driven. They're going to want to know, okay, so what's the bottom line, Brett? What kind of results did this thing actually get you? And what kind of so, time frame? So March, I closed like right about 990,000. Uh, so that's, you know, right out of the gate. Um, oh, that was like so your a lot of third, in the refis. That was your third month being licensed at that point, right? Third month being licensed only like two months with the actual company being a licensed LO. I guess you could say like I had passed the test, but I wasn't employed until January. Okay. Um, so that was like that maybe was like a month. Right in. That was like a month huh? after you joined our program then basically. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. And so April was a little bit lower because that was outside of the refis. That's when we went from the February twos to the, the March threes, April threes. Um, where people were a little bit more reluctant. So I only closed one loan the entire month of April. Um, so that was just 120. And then I jumped into May. Last month, I closed 1.8 uh, million with 3.4 on the books for June. So nice. um, yeah, you can kind of see that exponential. And then I'm already pushing people into July and August right now. So um, kind of pushing people out. So and I just so you guys know, I'm not in a big, heavy volume area. The average price of a house in North Carolina, specifically our area, is probably like 250. So it's wow. not like, oh, I closed three loans and that's three million dollars. Like that California. Is, yeah, that's like 10 to 12 in a month to get to that volume. And a lot of minor investors, like I spend 70% are investors from California, New York, something like that, and they're buying the small loans. Um, and so the the big advice i'd give on that for the new guy out there is know your stuff because some of them know it and they're expecting it but just like doran said care like make friends make long lasting friends that you want to party with that you want to go to their birthdays you want to invite them to your birthdays that like you want to watch their facebook stories because as you make like legitimate friends they're not going to want to go to anybody else anyways yeah, hundred percent. And uh, there's a great book that's called um, "Oh, the name's escaping me," but I think is uh, the author's name is Steve Sims. Uh, it, I think it's called Bluefish, if I'm not mistaken. And he's got a great line in there. He he calls it the chug test. He doesn't do business with anyone else, whether it be inside of his company or outside of his company, whether it be team members within his company or whether it be referral partners or whether it be clients. He doesn't work with anyone who doesn't pass the chug test. The chug test is, would you go and have a bevy with them? Would you invite them to your barbecue in the summer and have a bevy with them? Would you pass, would they pass the chug test? And so that's basically the, the principle you're bringing to light there, Brett, is, you know, have people on your dream team that you love and adore, they love and adore you. And that's magic, you know, when you're able to work with people that you work with, not because you have to, but because you get to, and it's a delight to serve them and they feel the same way about you. And you're working on a common mission to serve your mutual clients with excellence. That is magic. And I love the fact that you've already started to build that kind of a dream team in such a short period of time. What are you most excited about? It's been now, literally we're entering into your sixth month of being licensed. You're already doing over 3 million in funded this coming month, more in, in the pipeline beyond that. What are you most excited about and what's the biggest difference that being part of our program has made in your life? Um, I think what I'm most excited about, so I work with Main Street Home Loans over here on the East Coast of, and they give you a lot of ability to grow. Um, and so I think what I'm most excited about is kind of growing, getting bigger and being able to support more people. Um, I, I honestly adore the company I work for. Um, they've been great. They've been nothing but a family to me. So um, I really appreciate all the support I've gotten from them so far and 
that's what I look forward to is the next steps of going from 1.8 to three. Can we get four or five? Can we get six or seven? Um, and trying to continue to escape the plateau, the scary plateau that, that catches everybody eventually. Um, I want to get away from it. So I want to grow and continue to build. And I feel like the more people I can bring on, uh, the more people we can support and the more dreams we can make happen. And so every time I get somebody on the phone, that's like, Hey, I didn't like this guy that I was on the phone with. Can you help me out? I'm like, yes, I can. Um, let's make your dream. Let's turn the page. Um, and so that's, that's what I look forward to is every client is a new experience. Every client's a new journey. Um, and it's a new page to turn in somebody else's book. So that's what I'm most excited about. That's awesome. And just to wrap up before we sign off today, what, if you can encapsulate in maybe one or two sentences, what's the difference that really is the most precious, most valuable, most potently uh, life-changing for you out of being on the journey with us at Mortgage Marketing Coach? If, if there was one thing that you could really pull out as the most valuable, life-changing impact of uh, the investment you made in yourself in the program, what would that one thing be? Energy. I, you see this guy on the other side, this dude's packed full of energy. Um, and so it really is energy mindset, energy mindset, energy mindset. Um, I'm not jumping into a cold shower yet. I haven't gone full door in. Um, I know that <laughs> I'm starting to look like it, um, but I'm, we'll I'm still taking we'll more and relaxing showers. <laughs> um, so, but finding that energy and just rolling with it is probably one of the greatest things I got out of this. And a lot of people are like, well, I could probably get energy by myself. And it's, it doesn't matter if you're driving a hundred miles an hour in the wrong direction, you're not going to get where you want to go. Yeah. So find the energy, get the mindset and then roll in the right direction. And so that's the major thing that I loved about this program is I had the energy. I had the dedication um, I needed to change my mindset update. I needed the, the new Brett Clark 2.0 um, mindset and confidence, which I got firmly out of this program. Um, and then I got placed on the right road in the right direction. And that's what I think everybody would gain out of this program. Well, Brett, there's no doubt about it. You're a shining star waiting to happen in this industry. You know, anyone watching, listening to this, they know that that is just self-evident. And it's not because there's anything that isn't replicatable in your story. It's just that you decided to grab the bull by the horns and claim your dream and be all in in it to win it and be willing to pay the price and lock in on a purpose that is divinely infused in your soul to make a difference in the world, to serve people, to serve humanity, to elevate people out of suffering and to liberate them into a new life. And so there's so many principles in your story that we can lock into ourselves. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to share your story, because I knew there would be something really beautiful and inspiring that people can gain insight from, distinction from, and that can help them on their journey. I just want to honor you for uh, your fiercely courageous love to serve humanity, to serve your family, but to have a even bigger, broader, bolder, and vaster uh, vision for your life to serve humanity in a, you know, a really beautiful way that has you be light in the darkness. And so I, I honor uh, your uh, your valiant heart that had you be a badass on the front lines in the army, and it has you being a badass on the front lines of capitalism in your mortgage business, not serving to get, but serving to give. Uh, love that, you know, fierce desire in your heart to keep expanding and being the best version of yourself. And I also love that uh, you love to have fun and, and just bring your best every day and to be in gratitude. You know, you're an absolute delight to serve because you're in gratitude and you're ready to receive and you're ready to take massive action. And that's why you're getting phenomenal results. So I see nothing but greatness in your future. And uh, it's just a blessing and an absolute delight to be the catalyst in some way, even if it may be uh, small in comparison to the blood, sweat and tears you put in yourself at the end of the day. It really comes down to how coachable, committed, resourceful, decisive you're going to be uh, to capitalize on the opportunity that we have here. 
and you've done that in spades and then some brother. So just couldn't be more proud of you. Super excited about your future and super excited about your present because it's in savoring the moment now that has you stepping into your best life every day and creating your best life for your future. And man, your, your wife and your girls are beyond blessed to be under your leadership and uh, to, to call you hubby and daddy. So keep on keeping on brother. Super proud of you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I love that. And so those of you watching, listening to this, I just want to invite you guys to uh, consider that the first step in the journey that took Brett Clark from being brand spec and new, wet behind the ears, no experience in the industry to go in stratospheric and his fifth month being licensed, being able to be in a position where literally he's got over 3 million in the pipeline and it's only growing rock star partners, you know, 10 plus partners, seven of which are VIP exclusives that are doing 20 plus transactions a, a year rather. And to be able to do that in such a short period of time, obviously that doesn't happen by accident. It happens by choice. And the first choice Brett made is to reach out to get some more information. And so you have an opportunity to lock in on the same Genesis launching pad for awesome that Brett took and that is the breakthrough call. So if you're watching this, listening to this, and you're like, man, I'm loving Brett's story. Obviously, there's got to be some substance to this. That This can't just be a bunch of BS. There's got to be something behind this. I'm curious. I need to find a better way to grow my business. I realize I'm doing it the hard way. I realize that I'm leaving a lot of money on the table. I realize I'm just scratching the surface of the surface of my potential. And I'm ready for more. I'm ready to receive more and give more. I'm ready to step into higher levels of abundance, not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing. If that's you and you're on 100% commission, you're uh, 80 basis points or higher comp plan, and you're ready to take a quantum leap, not just an itty bitty little leap, but a quantum leap breakthrough in your business, working smarter, not harder, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call, just like Brett took just four months ago. And it seems like light years ago that it happened, but it's literally just four months ago. And you can do the same thing Brett did. Get on a call with us to see if we can help you by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Just the way you see it on the screen there, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. We're going to have a real talk conversation. This is not a sales pitch. This is a real talk conversation to see where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create that breakthrough, we'll show you what that looks like. And if not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. Either way though, friends, our goal for you, whether it be meeting with me or we meeting with one of, one of my consultants, is that you leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun. So if that sounds cool to you, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So Brett, last words before we sign off. If there was someone on the fence right now is like, Brett, I, I love your story. It's inspiring. I love how much you've been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. But, you know, my business is different. My market's different. Uh, I don't know if this is worthwhile, uh, you know, even getting into a breakthrough call because, you know, uh, I've been on, done a lot of different things. They didn't really work. Everyone seems to be selling the bright, shiny objects and the silver bullets and the shortcuts. Um, you know, I don't know if it's, if it's worth even bothering to, do the breakthrough call because you know i've been around the block or they're a newbie and they're like i don't know if i can afford it what would you speak to someone like that well the first thing i'm going to say to everybody out there is if you only want to work 40 hours a week nine to five don't call if you don't actually want to take the next step then don't waste your time or doran's time um, because the people out there that actually care about their clients and their realtors are going to work 24 hours a day seven days a week like that's just it's it's the business you got to be available when they're available um so if you're willing to take the time then you need to invest in yourself nobody ever got rich strong powerful happy by being comfortable so if it's gonna cause a little bit of uncomfort financially or time wise then that's what you need to do so um the, my biggest words is you know, if you like your nine to five and you're just getting by and you're cool with that and you don't want to do any more time, then don't call. Don't waste your time. Um, but if you actually want to grow and put in the time and put in the effort and be great, like all of the athletes that put in, you know, 80 hours a week, then those are the people that need to call because they actually want to get ahead. 
Amen to that, brother. Everyone wants to be a champion. Not everyone's willing to do what it takes to become a champion. And being a champion is not for everyone. But uh, this is not the place for people who are comfortable. This is the place for people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired of being in the same old spot uh, and banging their head against the same old wall and are ready to step into the magic of being comfortable, being uncomfortable so that you can create a life that's mighty comfortable. So guys, I, uh, I feel beyond blessed to be able to present to you this journey with the one and only Brett Clark. Brett, I just thank you so much for uh, your time with us. We went a little longer than usual, so hopefully I didn't jam up your schedule, but I just really uh, appreciate you, man. Appreciate your heart, appreciate your leadership, appreciate how you show up in the world and uh, excited to continue to be in your corner on your team as you continue to blossom and bloom into uh, you know, more and more of who you're called to be and who you're called to serve. So. Again, appreciate, well, I appreciate that. that. Thanks for having me out. Hey, my pleasure. Guys, thank you for watching. This is uh, Doran Aldana with the one and only Brett Clark coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're ready to take your business to the next level, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Well, that's all we got for today. You just heard it from the two bald and beautiful badasses themselves, the one and only Brett Clark and Doran Aldana. We'll talk to you again soon. Be blessed. And again, take massive action. Bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you're going to get massive results. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for hanging with us. Peace.